Paris, the coronavirus pandemic and mitigation measures to control it have led to a huge drop in ridership on public transit. Transportation experts say Metro lost as much as 90% of its riders at the peak of the pandemic, while the Chicago Transit Authority saw ridership drop around 70%. So as more people get vaccinated and the economy reopens, are riders going to come back? Joining us to share their insights are Audrey Winnink, Transportation Specialist at the Metropolitan Planning Council, Kate Lowe, Associate Professor for Urban Planning and Policy at the University of Illinois, Chicago, where her research focuses uh, on transportation equity, and Jackie Grimshaw, Vice President for Government Affairs and a Transportation Specialist at the Center for Neighborhood Technology. And welcome all to Chicago tonight. Um, Audrey Wenning, uh, how big a hit have local transit agencies taken as a result of the pandemic? Right, ridership is way down. And because revenue comes from transit fares in part, uh, their income has, is way down as well. And uh, Jackie Grimshaw, the big question uh, that we're asking tonight is how do you get riders to come back? Any ideas? Well, uh, yeah, you have to do a little bit of education and communicating with riders, letting them know that it's safe, uh, emphasizing all of the hygiene uh, provisions that the transit agencies have provided in terms of wipe downs and, and masks and providing sanitary, sani uh, 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 what, 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 what do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> um, sanitizers uh, sanitizers that's the word um so so that people feel confident uh you know and it's continuing to do the things we've done thus far you know masking distancing and so forth uh and and letting people know that the transit agency is doing all it can to make this the vehicles as and the stations as safe as possible Kate Lowe, is anything uh, known or has, have there been any studies showing how uh, people are behaving now? Are people social distancing and wearing masks on public transit or anecdotally or uh, empirically? So internationally, we haven't seen a high correlation between transit use and COVID cases. A lot of that hinges on adopting safe behaviors and things like masking. Um, I think the federal level has taken appropriate action by mandating masks in transportation. Um, however, we don't have local data on what mask compliance looks like, but uh, hopefully soon with the vaccine rollout, that will become less of an issue in, in the coming year. Audrey Wenink, uh, one proposal that came from the head of your agency was to lure riders back by temporarily at least either lowering fares or uh, allowing riders to ride for free thoughts on that yeah um, there really could be with the federal covid relief that we have seen that allows a little flexibility for innovation there could be some type of welcome back program where discounted monthly passes were offered say for the rest of 2021 and once you have a monthly pass in hand, it feels like it's free every time you take a trip. So getting people their muscle memory back uh, in terms of riding transit, that, that could be an approach. Uh, Jackie Grimshaw, as we look at uh, that proposal, uh, the, the lowering fares are dropping altogether. A uh, good idea from an equity standpoint? Well, when we look at the riders that continue to provide uh, those uh, seat rides on transit during the pandemic, you know, that 40%, 30% that continued to ride, these were essential workers. And usually the essential workers are the ones that are, are lower income. And particularly when you look at some of the jobs of those essential workers, they are mostly black and brown. So if we look at from an equity per, uh, a position, you know, having uh, the opportunity to have, as Audrey said, you know, that I call it an HB, HMO pass in your pocket, you know, with an HMO, you go to the doctor, you don't have to worry about the bill because it's already paid for. The same thing with that, that monthly pass in your pocket that you start to use it. And if it's more affordable, then of course more people will use it. Kate Lowe, looking at the system uh, big picture, what are the other equity uh, issues that need to be addressed as uh, the expectation is anyway that riders will be coming back uh, certainly at some level? So I think we have to think about what's going to happen after the pandemic in context of what's been going on for the last decade. We've seen a 26% drop in transit ridership on buses between 
2008 and 2019. So what's going on with bus service and ridership drops? So I would argue improving service quality on bus lines is a really critical equity issue and also critical for the health of the system. We need to provide fast, reliable service, and part of that is improving bus service. Audrey Wenick, are there any particular projects that would uh, that would promote equity? Uh, there's talk of extending the red line, fixing up the blue line. Your thoughts? Yeah, the red line extension is probably the big one uh, that would provide CTA service uh, on the south side of Chicago, where there is no CTA service right now. And I think another way to think about transit is operations. So uh, making sure that we are operating transit uh, more midday service, possibly later into the evenings, which would help uh, workers who don't have a traditional nine to five job, the service workers, uh, that would help them. Uh, Jackie Grimshaw, one of the things Mayor Lightfoot has mentioned as far as encouraging people to go back to public transit is to charge a congestion fee for people who drive downtown. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, congestion fees have worked in other cities uh, across the country and across the world. Uh, and I, it's been studied here. And the challenge uh, for us is actually how you implement it. And I know there have been a lot of suggestions, proposals, how to do it, but um, you know, it's not something that can happen very quickly. And if we're going to have our economy come back, I think we need to take uh, some measures that are more easily implementable than trying to go to congestion pricing. Kate Lowe, there's a report this afternoon that uh, Metro is adding uh, trains on three different lines. Uh, is that an indication that maybe things are already at least inching their way back to uh, normalcy? Well, having high levels of service and frequency is critical to get the ridership back. So we have to invest to see the ridership impacts that we hope for our transit system. So it's a promising step, uh, but it, there's not going to be immediate rebound. It will be a recovery across sectors, including transit. Audrey Wenink, uh, there is a, there's a concern among people in public transit that uh, that with all the people working for from home, that uh, it's never going to go back to the way it was. In that, uh, employers are going to start letting their employees work maybe one or two days from home going forward. Uh, when do you think it's possible to, for ridership to get back to pre-pandemic levels? It's going to take a while. It's going to take a couple years to see what the real outcomes are going to be. Uh, and I think we're probably going to see some different distributions of when people are traveling. So we're going to want to uh, offer more service during the midday, uh, possibly, uh, say Metro is a huge asset, possibly looking at turning that service into more of an all day service regional rail that's going both directions. So we're going to need to adapt our service as we see the needs adapting and, um, you know, make it work for the society that we're going to be living in post COVID. A couple of years, huh? Audrey Wenning, thank you for your observations. Jackie Grimshaw, likewise, and Kate Lowe, thank you as well.